it's incredible because I have this insane connection to my body now. Like it just communicates with me in a different way. And it tells me yes, it tells me no. And it's just like growing stronger and stronger ever since then. So it's wild, but I'm here for it. This is the Energy Within Podcast, helping you to embrace your weirdness, find the confidence to be your true self, and step fully into your soul's purpose. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master teacher, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, And this is episode, I'm not sure which number as I record the intro for this because I'm not entirely sure what week this will be out yet, but I'm sure it's going to be somewhere in the 150s. (laughs) So I have a guest today who we connected in a podcast exchange group that I'm a part of, one where I got many of my previous guests from, and she has an amazing story. So if you recall back a few episodes. I believe I've had her on twice. If you recall Katie Lane, the name and the focus of her group has since changed, but she started off with what she called the Back Pain Lady Club. And she had brought me in to do monthly Reiki for the women in the Back Pain Lady Club. And the women in that group always had amazing reports of, at minimum during the session, feeling more able to relax than they had been since starting to experience their chronic pain, being able to really calm down, get in tune with their bodies, be able to tune into messages over the pain that was distracting them from not being able to hear the messages in the first place. And today I have found Ashley. She was not a part of that group, but she has a very similar story of learning that emotional trauma can become stored in the body and manifest physically and that doing things like yoga and then eventually meditating, learning to manifest and even moving into receiving and then also doing Reiki has cleared away her back pain. So it's been an amazing journey for her. It's an incredible story that I'm so excited for you to hear as a message of hope to know that beyond whatever you've been trying in the physical, while that is all perfectly valid, 100% real, no right or wrong, just to consider that if you start to tap into your energy body and figure out what's going on there, that you can really accelerate your path to healing. So I'm so excited for you to hear this story Please let me know what you think. Please make sure that you share it. Reach out. Let me know your thoughts. Let Ashley know your thoughts. And I won't keep you from this any longer. Here we go. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to have you come on and share your story. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. I'm very excited to be here. So why don't you start off and just describe a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, definitely. So my name is Ashley Hollick and I am a new coach. Um, I work specifically with women who have been in abusive or toxic relationships. And the reason I started this was because I myself was in an abusive relationship in my teens. And then I suffered from 12 years of chronic pain that I recently healed about 19 months ago. So very passionate about this topic and the healing journey. You don't have to share more than you're comfortable with, but can we start kind of from the beginning and what started off this whole journey for you? Yeah, yeah. So it it started when I was 16 and, um, you know, it's now I have all these words and terms and I can kind of see the pattern and how it unraveled. Um, but obviously then I didn't know. I just met someone who said they would protect me and they were really sweet on me. They bought me, you know, he bought me clothes and those expensive shoes, like the Air Force ones. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't even into them, but I was like, these are like $70 shoes. And for a 16-year-old girl, that right. was like a lot of money, right? So 
Um, and now I know that's, you know, the love bombing stage right. too. And he was 16 too. So we were just kids. Um, but yeah, so it started out with the love bombing and then just lots of like words of affirmations, just, you know, all this buttering me up basically. Then it started getting a little bit um, emotionally abusive and it would be, it would be little things too, you know, like I really like your hair when it's straightened and saying like, oh, look at that girl's hair straightened, oh, you know? So it's yeah. like these little digs that were just kind of like controlling what I am and what I do and how I act and things like that. And I'm, I'm Mexican. So my hair is naturally very curly. <laughs> so obviously I would have to fake the straight hair. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a lot of cheating and a lot of lying and manipulation. And this was back before everyone had iPhones with locks on them. So, you know, I would go through a phone and catch him in lies all the time. And then it was the gaslighting of, well, you're being crazy. Like you're completely making that up. That's not what that meant. And then me questioning myself, like, wait, was that, am I, am I making this up? Am I crazy? Maybe I am being crazy. I'm the one going through someone's phone. Right. And then once we, once I moved out of my parents' house to start college and was living on campus and he finally had like full access to me because I was always getting grounded in <laughs> high school. And, you know, my parents were the ones who were like, if you did something fun one day, you couldn't have fun the rest of the weekend, right? It was like <laughs> only one fun thing allowed. And so um, he didn't have a lot of access to me. And so once I moved out and I was living on my own, then he had full access to me. And that is when it turned physically abusive. And, you know, it was, it was a cycle. It was once a week and I always knew that it would be coming. Um, mm -hmm. It would there would be the abuse and then there would be the apologies, the flowers, the I'm never going to do it again. And then there'd be the, the buildup, right? The tension. And then there'd be like walking on eggshells. And then there'd be the thing that I did wrong. I'm putting it in air quotes because, you know, it was never right. ever anything wrong. It could be something as simple as not having something to say. Oh. <laughs> like you'd be like, well, we'd be sitting there, you know, we're 19 or 18 or whatever. And he'd be like, well, what do you want to talk about? And obviously I'm in a very uh, stressful state right. <laughs> at all times. Uh, now I have better terms for it that I was just in fight or flight response, you know, all the time, my nervous system is not regulated. And if I didn't have something to say, then that would set it off. Right. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So, and that went on for about, it was only like nine to 10 months. And then it, ended in a pretty dramatic way. Oh boy. <laughs> Do you want me to share that? If you're comfortable with it. Yeah. But you don't have yeah. to, if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I could share. So, um, you know, one day he was abusing me and the only way I can describe it is because I don't remember exactly what happened. I always describe it as I saw red, mm -hmm. um, cause it, I didn't like black out. I wasn't unconscious. Like I was still there, but I don't remember. And, um, I always think it's like, I just exploded. Like I got so angry and I started fighting back and, uh, I was laying on the bed on my back and I started kicking. And so I just started kicking and I think I was screaming, <laughs> not any words, just kind of screaming like a, mm -hmm. you know, a primal animal or something. And I started kicking and he could kind of see that I wasn't there in that moment, that something had happened. And I was no longer, you know, this docile person that mm -hmm. he was abusing. And he put his hands up to stop me. And he was like, whoa, whoa, calm down. And I kicked oh, his Oh, you hands. calm down. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was telling me to calm down because, you know, I was I was of freaking course. out. Yeah. <laughs> and so I kicked his hand when it was outstretched and he started screaming in pain. And then I kind of snapped out of it and was like, what just happened? Um, and he ended up going to the hospital because he was in so much pain. And I had shattered uh, the little bones in his oh, wrist, boy. like the two balls in his wrist. And he had to have a cast for about eight weeks. So... <sighs> That was the last time that he ever put his hands on me. And, you know, I always think kind of that a little part of me, like my subconscious fought back for me because yeah. I I knew that I needed to get out. There was a, a few times that it had gotten very bad um, where he'd be choking me out. And I knew that oh, if goodness. I did not get out of this relationship, that uh, he would kill me eventually. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, I knew it was going down that path because it was just getting worse and worse. And so it's like my subconscious kind of fought back for me. And um, 
That wasn't the end of our relationship though, because I still was very much in love or yeah. <laughs> confused, yeah. right? Um, very in entrapped inside of that relationship, but he never put his hands on me again. I think he knew he had lost control <laughs> of me, yeah. right? In a sense. So yeah, that was my dramatic exit, wow. but you know, it probably saved my life. Right. Wow. So then how long after that did you notice the pain starting to manifest? Yes. So that was probably when I was 20, like I just turned 20. And when I was 21, I threw my back out twice in one month. Oh, wow. uh, I remember, I remember cause it was like, I'm 21 years old. I threw my back out. And when I threw my back out, it was, it wasn't like, Oh, it hurts. It was like, I sneezed one time and I coughed the other time. And there was like, just like a split second thing that all of a sudden, and now I, I kind of know that it was, my back was spasming after um, that like initial strain. Okay. And so after that moment, I couldn't walk for like three or four days. And oh, like, wow. I, I would be hunched over barely moving in just so much pain. And so obviously that was pretty concerning <laughs> to throw right. my back out twice at the age of 21. So um, I stole my dad's really great insurance. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll <laughs> go to the doctor and see what's going on. And they did x-rays and all they could say was that I had bulging on my L4 and my L5 and that it was the worst of someone that they'd seen oh, at, wow. at my age at 21. And so I started physical therapy. Um, I went for eight weeks to the physical therapy. They gave me a bunch of exercises. I did not do them very <laughs> well because <laughs> If you've ever done physical therapy, they are very boring <laughs> exercises. <laughs> They're like the tiniest little movements mm -hmm. over and over for a long time. <laughs> and, you know, I'm 21. I'm working two jobs. I worked in the bar and restaurant industry. So I'm working two jobs. I'm working long hours. And when I'm not working, I'm out partying, enjoying being 21, <laughs> right? And so I didn't really do these exercises. I tried but, you know, I was like, okay. And, and my back wasn't hurting too bad at that point. Um, I just, you know, had thrown it out and it was starting to get achy. And so I kind of always had this ache and then it just, you know, gradually got worse and worse. And it was always at, I would say a seven to a nine at all times. Oh, and in those first five years, I threw my back out eight times. Oh my God. And it was like once, one to two times a year, um, I, I always knew it was coming. I think the last time that I threw it out, my son was just over a year and I was getting him out of the bathtub and I picked him up. I felt the twinge because that was like the eighth time that it had happened. And I, with a wet naked baby, I had to like run 10 feet over to my bed and drop him on the bed oh, because goodness. I knew that my back was about to just full on give out and start spasming and things like that. And, and yeah, that was, that was probably... I was born in 2015, 2016. And so it was for five years, about eight times. Oh my God. Now I'm starting to <laughs> worry even more than I already do about myself and how many times my back has gone out on me. Have you thrown your back out before? I have. And I've felt that twinge. Um, one was in the middle of a jump squat while I was teaching one of my classes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. And nothing prompted my current one, but I'm I'm working through some current pain <laughs> at the moment too. So we'll get to the other part of the story and what I know I have to do that I just haven't done. <laughs> yes. yes. But at what point did you decide you needed to try something different? Yeah. So there was um once I had my son and when I threw it out and you know, there were times where I'd say, not today, honey, my back hurts. Right. And, um, for the most part, I, I pushed through it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really let me, let it stop me. And doctors weren't really helping. All they would do is give, want to give me pain medicine. And mm -hmm. I refused medicine. Um, even like Tylenol, my husband, when he met me, uh, he'd be like, take a Tylenol. And I told him I'm not taking any medicine for it, I have to deal with it because mm -hmm. if I 
because to me, it's just a slippery slope. And right. coming from, you know, a family where there's a lot of addiction inside of it, oh, my husband would be like, yeah. just take a Tylenol. I'm like, I am not going to take a Tylenol because then in five years, I'm going to be on the street addicted to <laughs> heroin or something. You right. know, there was like, it was no, there was no medium. I knew, yeah. I knew it was a slippery slope and I just didn't want to deal with that. So I was like, nope, I'm not going to take a Tylenol. I'm just going to I'm going to have a grumpy morning mom because <laughs> in the morning I'd wake up and it was like, it was the worst. It it felt like someone was trying to rip the muscles off of mm. my spine. Like the pain was so excruciating. And at that point when my son was about, you know, two, I was like, okay, I got to, I got to figure something else out. I have to try to make this pain go away because it was only getting worse. And every time that I threw it out, you know, I just had this fear that I was going to be in a wheelchair by the time I was like 50. Cause I yeah. was 25 at this point. And I was like, if it just keeps getting this worse every single year, what's going to happen when I'm 50. Right. And so I was like, maybe I'll, I'll go to yoga. Maybe yoga will help. Everyone says yoga helps backs. Mm-hmm. Right. So I started going to yoga and I went about three times. I found a yoga place. I was living in San Diego. I found a place, a great place with a daycare, which was perfect because my husband worked during the day. I stayed home with um, our son. And then I worked at night at bars and restaurants, you know? So there was no time for me to go when he got home from work Mm -hmm. and started going to yoga about three times a week for about, uh, the, I think it took three months, three months. And then my back pain went away and I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) So I kept going to yoga. I was like, it's working. I, I figured it out. My back was just twisted all up and in knots or something. And so I thought I had figured it out. Um, And then I got pregnant with my second son and about mid pregnancy, I was around 20 weeks. He started not liking the daycare. Mm. He would just run out of the daycare crying, screaming when he had been going for uh, a year, it'd been a year. He'd been going for a year and loved it. It was a nice playroom. And, you know, for me, someone coming from trauma, I was like, something happened. (laughs) Something happened. And I'm sure, I'm sure nothing happened. I think it was just, I was pregnant and we were, and he was three and a half and we were telling him, you know, mommy's going to have a baby to take care of. And I think maybe I made him feel like I was going to like leave him or something. So I think it was just something like that. But obviously it was like, I I couldn't go to the yoga anymore because he would run out of the classroom and (laughs) they can't restrain him. Right. Yeah. I stopped going, just was like, I, I need to cancel. I can't come to yoga anymore. Um, and then I started working out at home. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I can work out at home. And I had my son. I didn't have the back pain all the rest of my pregnancy. And a few months after he was born, I think it was in December, he was born in July. And so in December, I started to feel my back hurting, like just a little bit of a twin. I was like, Mm, my back feels a little bit achy. And it'd been about 14 months since the pain had gone away. And then within a month from that first initial, like, okay, this, I feel it. It came back and it was as worse as it had ever been. And I, (laughs) yes. And so I was like, this was at the end of 2019. So I'm like, okay, I got to go back to yoga. Like that, that worked the first time I got to go back to yoga. And so I started going back to yoga on so like weekend mornings, you know, I didn't want to go back to the daycare and have the same thing happen, mm-hmm. you know, because it would cost more to go there. So I was like, okay, I'll just go on the weekends. I'll start there, see if I can get back into the habit. And March rolled around and yeah. the pandemic hit. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so every, the yoga studio is closed, right? And I was like, what the heck? Um, and now looking back, it was almost like, the universe was like, it's not yoga. It's not the yoga. Stop going to yoga. That's not the problem. You need to go deeper because it forced me to stop going to yoga. And mm-hmm. you're a mom. I I can't do yoga at home with the kids. I, right. I've tried it. They did like the virtual thing. And even if my husband was home, I would hear like the kids screaming and crying yep. and I'm trying to do yoga. I'm like, this is not the same thing. You know? like that, I'd rather I, just do a workout than try to do like a peaceful, relaxing right. yoga routine. It's like that reel, if you've ever seen it with the audio of like, it's just the mom like trying to sit there with her coffee by herself or something. And yeah. the caption's always like when dad says he'll take the kids so you can go rest and all you hear is kids screaming and things <laughs> banging. And it's like, yep, this is exactly. not restful at all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, that was the summer of 2020. And, uh, you know, we moved to, we moved to Texas. We bought our first house. Um, in September of 2020 and everything was just going so great. Like we were absolutely thriving. We have two great kids. I have an amazing husband. We bought a house 
but I had this back pain and it was so bad. We had family come visit us in, uh, you know, October or so. And I spent most of their visit just laying on the ground Mm. and having a conversation from the ground because it hurt too much for me to stand. Like I couldn't even stand up straight. I'd have to be like hunched over, bracing myself. I couldn't sit down because that still hurt really bad. So I'm laying on the ground. Thank goodness Mm. it's a the carpet was very clean because we had just moved in. So I was like, I don't mind laying on this like really soft, clean carpet that kids didn't live in this house before. So it still looks nice. Right. But I spent the visit laying on the ground and I was like, something's got to change. And about a few weeks after that, I heard about um, emotional trauma being stored as physical pain. And I don't even know where it like just popped up on social media or something. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I I I laughed. I was like, that's, that's crazy. That doesn't make sense. That makes absolutely no sense. There's no way. Like, obviously I know I've, I have trauma, but I was like, there's no way that that's the reason. And then I was like, well, huh. It started when I was 21, about a year after I got out of the relationship. I know I had very severe PTSD and anxiety and depression and all of these things from that. I was like, you know, maybe this, maybe this could be the reason I kind of was like, okay, I'm not going to fully say that it's not possible and I'll just kind of see what happens. And so I ended up taking this manifestation course thinking, you know, oh, this will be really fun. I'm going to just manifest super cool things. And what ended up happening was it was this deep healing container. There was a lot of healing work inside of it, a lot of journaling and meditations and things that I had never heard of. And things that made me cry a lot. Like there was a lot of crying, a lot of releasing. And after about four or five weeks of this, I woke up and my back pain was gone. Wow. And it stayed gone? It's So it's been about 19 months and it's mostly stayed gone. There's been a couple of times where it's come back and, you know, instead of going, okay, let me go get my ice pack and alternate it with heat and ice or let me do some stretches I come to my office, I sit down and I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What is happening inside of my mind emotionally? What am I uh, lingering on? What am I ruminating on? And what do I need to work through? And I, then I do the work and it goes away. That's amazing. it's it's, It's incredible because I have this insane connection to my body now. Like it just communicates with me in a different way. And it tells me yes, it tells me no. And it's just like growing stronger and stronger ever since then. So it's wild, but I'm here for it. (laughs) That's awesome. So through this manifestation course that you did, was that where you were introduced to Reiki or did that come a little bit after? How did that get introduced? Yes. So the Reiki actually came from somewhere else. It was an app. I don't remember which app. I want, I want to say boss babe, but it might oh, okay. be something different. Um, and they had an app and people would post like, oh, I'm offering, you know, a, a one-on-one coaching session for testimonials, things like that. And I saw someone offering Reiki and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I've never had it done before, but I'm open to it. <clears throat> I'm doing all these new things. Like, why not? And so I met with her um, on the phone. We had a meeting and it was a distance Reiki. And so she did three distance Reiki. And that was kind of right when I started this manifestation course. Okay. And almost like immediately after the second session, I kind of was like, oh, it feels a little bit better. And Mm -hmm. so that was just kind of the beginning. And I was like, okay, like this is starting, starting to work and starting to opening, open my eyes to all the possibilities that were out there. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And did you say you've been, you've since become certified yourself in are you Reiki one so far, you said? Yes. So I just got Reiki one attuned the day before I got really sick. Oh. And so I've been like, <gasps> yeah. you didn't, Oh, I didn't catch that. You probably told me that I didn't catch that. That's probably why you got sick. Yeah, I got sick the day after. The next day I woke yeah. up and my throat was sore. And you're, then I was sick. All for the purging nine days. that happens after your attunement. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm supposed to pra- be practicing on myself, but I was so sick for nine days that I was like, I don't have any yeah. loving energy right now to give myself. <laughs> and so I've only been better for a couple of days. So I just started working with the Reiki for the last couple of days. 
there were a couple times when I was like, I'm too tired. Hey, higher self, can you do it for me? <laughs> yes. I know. I, I should probably over. have done that. <laughs> I don't know if it worked because I would ask before I went to sleep. So, <laughs> But that is so amazing because I know I shared with you when we met prior to this, but just for everybody else, that I've done sessions for specifically for women who had back pain and they were a part of this membership because of that. And it was like a support group healing journey type of thing. And I was brought in to provide some of the energy healing. And I haven't heard a lot of like updates beyond the woman who runs it, but everyone would always report at least during the session that it was the most relaxed they were ever able to be since being in pain, that they were actually able to get in tune with their body, calm down and hear messages. And I think that's also another really awesome part of your story is just how in tune you are with your body now. And I think that's a huge issue for so many of us, probably in the high 90s percentage of the world, probably, that we're just so disconnected from our bodies. And even just aside from the physical, like so many people are even just afraid to be alone with their own thoughts. They, they just don't want to deal with it. So then that's how we get all these things manifesting and they get stuck. And then we only tend to think in the physical and trying to get rid of it. And we need to branch out a little bit, I think, into the energy body as well. Like, yeah, be realistic about what's going on with the body physically, but then understand that there's always always, in my opinion, something else going on at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, looking back now on my yoga experience and when I did yoga, the reason why I think my back pain went away, I don't think, I'm sure the stretching was helpful, but I don't think that was the reason. I think it was because I was taking that one hour and being very intentional and connecting with my body and moving, moving slowly, challenging myself and being quiet because you know, you can't bring your phone with you into yoga right. and you can't <laughs> multitask while you're doing yoga. You're really present and in the moment. I think that is why my back, what didn't hurt after doing yoga was because I was giving myself that attention. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I, the other day someone was talking about like, oh, how our great thoughts come uh, while we're in the shower. And I'm like, it, it happens to me all the time. And I know it's because I can't bring anything into the shower because it's going to get wet. Right. So I never uh, considered that I part of it. Do, yeah. All I can do is sit with myself and my thoughts. And, you know, I, I need to be more intentional about just being still and peaceful and present. And I feel like that was what this whole sickness was, was Get, making sure that I didn't do anything except be with myself. <laughs> yeah. Integrate that energy from your attunement <laughs> mm -hmm. rather than just yes. continuing to run, run, run. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was a much needed break because I, you know, I tend to push myself and oh, yeah. I always want to do all the things right. And mm -hmm. I get intentionally slowed down by the universe as well. <laughs> it's like, no, yes. you're stopping now. We're done for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is just a curiosity question for me. Do you plan on moving through the other levels of Reiki or do you think the self-healing Reiki one level is where you're going to leave it for now for what you need? I'm just curious. Um, yes. So with the coaching certification program, we do plan to go through the Reiki two in a few awesome. months. So yeah, so that'll be happening in a few months and I'm just going to kind of see where it takes me. I don't really think I'll be practicing much in person because I live in kind of a small town and I feel like they don't know too much about Riki. Yeah. Um, I do have a few friends here it's, and it's a new town for me as well. Um, so I do have a few friends that I could practice on and start working. Yeah. So the coaching that you mentioned, can we talk just a little bit about that and just kind of describe what it is that, that you help with and how that works? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I am creating a program and it's, you know, a five-step process to kind of fully thrive and heal deeper after um, being in an abusive or toxic or narcissistic relationship. And so a lot of it is, or the beginning of it is really learning about how the trauma has affected your body, how it's changed your brain and how it's possible to change your brain back to what you want. Right. And it's kind of opening 
and expanding your mind to the possibilities that are out there and all of the different healing and modalities that are available too. Because, you know, for a long time, I, I thought I was as healed as I would, I could get, Mm -hmm. right. I thought I was at the end of my healing journey. And now I know it's not a destination. It's kind of a lifelong journey that you're on. And I also thought that the only way to heal was to go to therapy and talk to a therapist and talk it out. Right. And uh, now from like the research that I'm kind of seeing and I it's talk therapy, isn't always the best thing for that kind of trauma. A lot of times talking about it just keeps it there. It keeps it stuck. And a lot of time with this type of trauma, it's best to physically move it out of the body and to heal it in other ways. Right. And so that's a huge part of the program. And then the rest of it is teaching the healing modalities, um, that I've learned and the strategies that I've used myself to heal my pain and to, you know, finally release it and start creating the life that you really want. That's not defined by your trauma. Yeah. That's what I love about stories like this is I know there are so many people that and I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong, of course, but just there's so many people who take on chronic pain or diseases, whatever they have going on. It becomes part of their identity. And then they they hit that wall. We're like, nope, this is it. This is as far as I can go. Nothing else is going to work. And it may take some searching through different modalities because what works for one person might not work for somebody else. But as naive as people might think I sound when I say it, like I really do believe that if if you truly want it, if your soul is truly destined for it and you you put in the effort and the research and just keep trying that you can find something that's going to help you end <laughs> whatever you're yeah. suffering with, you know? Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. There's just so many different things out there and it's not a one size fits all. And I just know now that, there's so many more things that I don't know. And so it's just a constant journey of exploring and, you know, being happy with the progress along the way Mm -hmm. and not racing to get somewhere. Right. Because there's always going to be new things that come up and traumas that need to be rehealed. And (laughs) I look at it as like, if you go to the gym for a month, that you're not good for the rest of your life, right? right. You have to keep <laughs> going to the gym yeah. and it's the same thing with your mind. And you got to switch you it up to too. keep training it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't just do it once or do the same thing, right? I'm, I'm constantly switching my morning routine and my meditation practice because it starts to get like, okay, this isn't working or I get bored with it, right? So mm-hmm. to, keep me, to keep, keep me doing it, I have to switch it up and have variety. Right. This is so awesome. I, I'm so glad that We were able to connect so you could come on and share this story. It's just the stories of hope are the ones that I love the best. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's an important part of my purpose and my mission now to just spread awareness that this is even possible because I feel like there are so many people who have chronic back pain and hip pain and, you know, trauma is stored in our hips and our back a lot of the times and our shoulders. And people are just living with these migraines and they're like, oh, I just, I need to take an Advil, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, wait, maybe this could be something else. And so that's a big part of it is just spreading awareness that maybe it's not a physical thing. Maybe it has to do with past trauma because Mm -hmm. I had no idea two years ago, I would have you know, called you crazy and said, <laughs> please leave me alone. Let me go in peace. Right. Yeah. And, and then I did it. And I, when I first healed the pain and it went away, I didn't even tell anyone. <laughs> I like, I kept it to myself because I, I, I thought I had gone crazy or I thought people wouldn't believe me yeah. or they would think that I was lying about it for mm-hmm. 12 years because there was a long period of time where I wouldn't pick things up off of the ground. <laughs> Like I'd, I worked in a restaurant, I would drop something, but I'd be holding plates and I, I would say, I can't pick up that napkin that I just, dropped. Yeah. And, you know, my, my coworkers would be like, seriously, and they'd have to pick it up or, um, there'd be something on the floor at the house for days. Like I wouldn't pick it up. So I'm like, I can't pick it up. You know what I mean? So I yeah. thought people would think I was making it up. And after about six months, I kind of started whispering it to my best friends, like, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> my back doesn't hurt. Right. And they're like, well, what'd you do? I meditated and I, <laughs> I cut 
I cut imaginary cords. Uh I don't know. It's gone though. And I just did an episode on cord cutting actually. (laughs) Yeah. And then after 16 months, I was like, I can't keep this to myself anymore. I have to, I have to share it with other people and help others, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. One other important thing to note, I think, from your story, too, is how long it had been from the time you left the relationship to the time that the pain really showed up where people might not make that connection. Like you said, that's what it's from, especially once you're so far removed, you got out of it, you think you're okay, and maybe in some ways, obviously, you are okay, you're much better off than you were when you were in the relationship, of course, but if we don't deal with the feelings that came up, the emotions, the brain changes, like you mentioned, if we don't process through that and do something about it, it's going to start to manifest and be like, hello, deal with me. (laughs) Yes. So one of the things that I I always say, I love this metaphor is that trauma is like a weed. So if you don't do anything to that weed, we had a weed that was in our yard and I... (laughs) I learned this the hard way. (laughs) If you don't do anything, it slowly begins to choke out the rest of your grass and Mm -hmm. kills your grass. And it's growing underneath. And it ended up being a sticker bush weed. And it killed like a quarter of um, our our quarter acre lawn. So a big portion of it. And now we have very, very intense stickers in our yard because I ignored it. And I thought it would be fine. I thought they were just pretty flowers. I'm like, it's fine. And so trauma is the same way. It's not going to go away on its own. It might get a little bit better with time, but it could also get worse. Like with Mm -hmm. me, my back pain continually got worse and worse and worse. And it was affecting areas of my life in ways that I didn't realize. You know, I wasn't able to have a disagreement with my husband. (laughs) I would, I would run away from the conversation, Mm -hmm, right? I mm -hmm. I couldn't actually have a conversation that was slightly uncomfortable, even though it was like, no big deal. It, it affected all areas of my life and I didn't even realize. So you got to take care of the weeds. Yeah. That's a really good one. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And every time I'm weeding too, like in the backyard, (laughs) I'm like, Oh, I I have like a whole series about how trauma is a weed just ready to be spread out there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. Can you let everyone know how to find you and maybe let us know a little bit more about when the program might be available? Yes. Thank you for having me. Um, So I am most active on Instagram. I'm trying to start back on Facebook again, but it's at Ashley underscore Holic. And um, the program, I am working on it right now. So it'll probably be opening in, I think the end of September is when I'm going to open it up. So yeah, so that'll be coming out soon. I will have the wait list up as well if anyone wants to hop on before it is um, fully open. But yes. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure I put all those links in the show notes. And thank you so much again. Yes. Thank you. Well, that was an incredible story. I always love hearing stories of where Reiki, meditation, journaling, things like that are part of the healing process in a very real and tangible way where there are actual results that are felt and full healing taking place. That's, I mean, that's just amazing to have that evidence, to have that as a story of hope that it's possible. So consider again, like I've been saying, you don't have to come to me. I would love you to come to me, but (laughs) just consider that there are other options out there that involve healing through the energy body, healing through your chakras, healing through your aura, and dealing with past traumas and emotions, that those are the things that are manifesting physically as a sign, as a nudge to get you to deal with it. (laughs) And the reality is, it's very real that once you process through that, you can heal what's been going on. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope that it resonated. I hope that it gave you hope. If there was something that you specifically feel stuck out to you, 
or even if you just recognize this as a message that more people need to hear, please, please share it. Go ahead and take a screenshot or do a screen flow. Share it to your Instagram or your Facebook. Tag me, tag Ashley. Let us know what your favorite part was and help the message spread. As always, I would love to invite you to come do a Reiki session with me. So if you're feeling led that this may be part of your path, something that may help you, please reach out. You can visit my website, book a session on there. If you have any questions at all or anything to share, please reach out to me either on Instagram, through my website, or you can hop inside the Energy Within Facebook group where I do occasionally hop in for group Reiki and live card pulls. And of course, I will have Ashley's links below so that you can connect with her on Instagram and also get on her wait list if that course sounded like it was for you. Thank you so much as always for being here and I'll see you next time. 